Good, good morning. Y'all are happy today, aren't you? Amen. It's a good day in the house of God. Miracles are happening. So I just want to encourage you, extend your faith and believe God. God's get, about to do amazing things that's beyond what we can even think or ask. Hey, um, God bless all of you guys. Uh, we're wrapping up today's series on Mastermind. And you know this, this series is, I think, I've heard more comments about it helping people and, and bringing things to light. And it's all been about our thoughts and our thought life and replacing them with truth and being free, free from our past, our issues, things that have been hindering us and moving into victory. And we have a program around here that we are part of our small groups ministry, and that is called Freedom, the Freedom Groups. And Freedom Groups are, are 12 weeks that are designed where they take the Scripture and the Word of God, and they put it, and they, they, they discuss it, and then they apply it to your life, and then you pray through it, and you realize where you are on it, and, and every week is just a level of freedom, 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 freedom. And what we understand, and what I was, as I was thinking about this when I was working on Mastermind, I said, I said, freedom is like Mastermind on steroids, <laughs> And so if you want to take this and lock it in and get this thing really settled, and if there's still things in your path and you want to find freedom and victory in all areas of your life, I encourage you to sign up for these groups. And small groups, I think, sign up really officially next week. But I ask if our uh, connection director, Josh, could get these available, and Forrest, pa Pastor Forrest, who leads the Freedom Group, and they got six of those groups, that's the only ones we have, six groups this semester, and uh, you can sign up today. Everybody say today. today. And so the way you do that is you go online, you, you can do it, I think, through our app. If you have our app, you can go to the app. You can go to our website, loveofchristchurch.org, and sign yourself. And if you want to do it, I think, as a couple, there's couples groups, and there's different days, different times, and uh, it's just amazing, powerful, miracles happen. We have had more testimonies coming out of that, the power of God in people's life being changed. And so uh, I just really, and as I was praying about that, I said, you know, how many of you know, you said, well, wow, that's a long time to think about that. But how many of you think that if you can invest 12 weeks of your life and change the rest of your life, how many of y'all think that would be a good investment and a good trade-off? Well, I just want to encourage you, freedom groups, they will probably fill up. So if you sit around for two or three weeks and try to think about it, uh, well, by the way, just ask God for wisdom and you'll see what in the message and then hear what he says or get peace and make your decision. Amen. And do it. It will change your life. Freedom groups, register online, start today. Hey, we're wrapping up our series. And as I was supposed to wrap it up two weeks ago, and God keeps giving me more, but this is the last one. I'm starting a brand new series called Heart for the House. And it's going to be about how we can see and work and see what God is doing through this church and through your lives and how we're all going to connect and see what God is going to do. But in this is that the Lord impressed on me that he said you need to build their faith a little bit because everything that we've been talking about, replacing the lies that you had, the, the accusations, the rejection, the pains, the wounds, that you have to believe that God's word is true. You have to believe in God first. And we'll settle that. If you don't know Jesus as Lord, we're going to lead you in a prayer. But you also have to believe that he's real, he's powerful, his promises are true, and that you lock in on that. And those lies, the devil keeps speaking to you, you replace them, but you've got to have faith. And actually, as I looked in this, that, that, that there's a really about a shield of faith. So today I'm going to be speaking about that shield of faith. But let me read through our main scripture we've been working through. Kind of remind us all in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5. It says, Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. Everybody say divine power. <laughs> Supernatural power beyond what makes sense because you don't have to understand it. It is supernatural divine power to demolish stronghold. And the strongholds are these places of our thoughts that have gotten there 
through false teaching, through wounds that we've been doing, through pains that we've gone through, through trials that have broken us, and through our realities. And we've allowed those thoughts to build a place. And when we allow that lie to be there, that's where Satan can operate to torment you. He's not possessing you, but he's firing thoughts in there that are, that are tormenting you. And it says... Then we demolish arguments, which that word means false thoughts. In other words, anything that's a lie. And every pretension, which means a claim that's held higher than sets itself against the knowledge or the truth of God. So if we're allowing a lie to take a higher place than what God's truth says, it's, irre- it's regardless of of what we're seeing before us, we've got to stand in faith on what God says and believe his truth. And that's when the freedom starts coming. And then we can take captive every thought and make it obedient or conform to Christ. Because that's ultimately becoming like Jesus when we do. So the key to victory, the key to winning this battle, because the battlefield is our mind. God has empowered us as a unique creature in his image. And Satan is attacking our minds with thoughts and with lies. And when we do, he's defeating us. He's keeping us from living the victorious life full of peace and joy and prosperity and health and everything else. And that's why we need to hold on to this thing. It's a fight. I'm going to tell you, even as I've been going through this series, I don't know about you, but I'll find myself all caught up in a thought and all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, I got to, wait a minute, got to go to war again. Because this, this is stuff that's got locked into us and we've accepted it as just our reality. So it takes faith. Because faith is power, faith is victory and overcoming the thought line. So let me show you three ways how faith and our thoughts are interwoven, because I wanted you to see how, how important it is, and then what that faith does. Number one, faith extinguishes, in other words, puts out worrying thoughts. In Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 13, Paul is trying to get in this revelation from God, and he's trying to pass it on to the church of Ephesus, which we now, praise God, have. And he starts talking about put on the full armor of God. And he starts listing the armor of God. And he says, put on the full armor so that when the day of evil comes, there's that way. Every day there's an evil. There's an attack. There's an oppression. There's a thought. There's a place. There's something happened. There's a persecution. When the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. In other words, have victory. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm. Everybody say stand firm. firm. This is going to be quick. All throughout these three points, it's standing, it's believing, it's faith, and it's firm without wavering. It's not a, there's, there's no doubting in there. He says, then stand firm then with the belt of truth. And I put that part in. There was lots of pieces of the armor, but I thought, wow, that so lines up with what we've been doing is we take the lie that we've been told by the devil that we're no good or that we'll never accomplish that, we'll be defeated or that we're rejected or that no one loves us or that, you know, our lives are going to be messed up, that I'll never, whatever that lie is, we've got to replace it with the truth of God and that belt of truth is part of our armor. In addition, and he go, and I left the rest of them out. In addition to all this, take up the what? Shield of faith, from which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, as I begin to study this, and I've always kind of known or taught that those flaming arrows were thoughts that the, the devil was flying. And I was like, how did I learn that? Or I heard that. But I wanted to like, I want to see this myself. And I started looking at every word in this thing and looking in an original Greek language and then understanding the meaning that scholars have given to it. And when I found that came to this word flaming, one of the ways that this word is translated is greatly worried. And all of a sudden, it jumped off the page to me. That's it. That's exactly where we are in our thoughts, is these thoughts come flying in that, you know, something happens. You get a little pain, and guess what? I think I'm dying. Amen? You know, you're going to die and not live. Yo, I'm going to live and not die in Jesus' name. 
you know, that something's going to happen, that this is going to go down, or that person is going to not like me, or people are going to do this, or whatever is going on, I'm going to run out of gas. How many of y'all ever think about that? Amen. You know, I'm not going to have enough money to make it to the end. Well, you made it to the end till now. God bless you. Amen. You'll keep making it to the end. Woo. Flaming arrows, greatly worried. That's what that word, in fact, I started to show you the teaching, but I don't have time. But, but one of the words where it was translated to burn was where Paul was writing to Corinthians. He said that, that when he was preaching to him, he says that he had great concern for all the churches. And then he talked about it being a burn. It was a burning inside of him. In other words, sometimes a great concern, which is really almost, it can translate into a worry. You know, we think, well, we need to be concerned. How many of y'all have ever worried about your kids? Any of y'all have kids out there? How many of y'all, if you have kids, you've worried, amen? How many of you have ever worried about your parents? Like maybe, you know, yeah, we all worry. You worry about your finances. You worry about your health. You worry about your jobs. You worry about the world. You're worrying about Australia. You're worrying about the fires there. You're worrying about the news. You're worrying about the politics. You're worrying about this and that. We can find ourselves in a lifestyle of worry, and we've actually now accepted it that that's where we are. And some of you with that gift of mercy especially, you are just carrying the burdens of the world every time you hear some pain. So you need to be specially aware of this. If you don't know what your gift is, you need to go to Growth Track, and we'll help you understand that. But faith extinguishes worrying thoughts because it's somewhere in there. It's like a shield, and the worry comes flying to you, the thought that comes flying to you, that whatever this is, and you have to put up the shield of faith, which is not physically, but you have to emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you have to know, no, 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 I am not believing that lie. That is a lie of the devil, and I am declaring God's word over it right now in Jesus' name. And when that faith is there, the real, active, powerful, living faith, all of a sudden, that fiery dart just says, whoa, it doesn't have any power any longer. And that's really what I want for you. I want you to live. Can you just imagine? Can you just imagine? What would your life be if you didn't worry for the next year? I mean, just one year. Some of you say, I'd just like one day. <laughs> but imagine if you could put seven days in a row without any worry. Seven weeks and 52 weeks into a year. And a year into a lifetime. That somehow you're able to transfer this burden to the Lord. And when it becomes a concern, yes, we need to be concerned about certain things, but we got to immediately transfer it to the Lord so it doesn't become a worry. Because God has, I could show you so many, he says, don't be anxious, fear not, take courage. I mean, I, he says that more and more and more, and he has not designed our human bodies to do this. He's not designed man to carry worry because he's designed us to trust in him. And he tells us that over and over and over again. And even science now is telling us that the one of the number one causes of almost most of the illnesses outside of our diets and exercise, but is just stress and worry. And that worry starts transforming the, the pro, whole body and all kinds of sicknesses and disease and, and everything else unstableness and mental illness and emotional illness. Everything comes from this constant worry that we're not able to give to God. And God is saying, I want you to have peace in Jesus' name. You see, there's a place there. There's a, you've got to have that faith that's strong, that's active, that's real. And that we're going to show that. Because we've come to believe, and this is what I want you to see. If you were standing there and there was a, a, a real enemy that was standing there, a human being, and they had a, a bow and an arrow, and they were standing there with an arrow, sharp as a big broad head on it, and it was full of fire, and they were getting ready to shoot, and you'd just stand there and let them shoot, and then shoot again, and then shoot tomorrow, and then shoot next week. You would, you would when you saw that flaming arrow, what would you do? When you saw that enemy, what would you do? 
you would realize that thing is not going to do me any good in Jesus' name. Amen? I better put that thing out. I better block that right now. I better lift up my shield and stop it. But you see, we have been so conditioned in our life to worry that we think it's part of our nature. We think it's part of, you know, everyday life. We think it's the way we're supposed to be. We think there's no other way to live. It, we think it's because of our realities. No, it's not. It doesn't matter what your reality is. That's what God is trying to say to you. You should not worry about it. Yes, you're going to go through some stuff, but that doesn't mean you have to let it become a worry. Because it's a fire, you know what it does? It consumes everything. It destroys everything. It, it takes it and turns it into ash. And God says, I don't have that design for you. Lift up your shield of faith. Begin to take those thoughts and, and stop that worry. And we see that. So I put a, an action point in there in your notes. And it says, what specific worry do I need to extinguish? Because you need to not just be a hearer of the word. You need to be a doer. You need to go from here and really apply this thing. You need to see that worry is an attack of an evil one to destroy you, to take your joy, that it is not just something to be accepted because you're going through something. Life is something all the time. What you got to do is say, no, I'm not going to do that. I recognize the enemy, and I'm going to do it. So what worry are you in? Maybe this last week. Maybe it's been for a long time. Your health, your marriage, your finances. What are you worrying about? Your kids. How many of y'all know that worry has never changed anything? Amen? We know that, and then we'll still do it. How many of y'all know worry causes you emotional and physical stress to your body? We know that, but we still do it. So what do you need to extinguish? I want you to choose that thing, and today you're going to say, I'm going to start applying faith to it. I'm going to find a scripture to it. I'm going to lift it up, and I'm going to declare. And every time that thought comes to me, I'm going to say, praise the Lord. I am not receiving that, and I am giving that to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Faith extinguishes, puts out, just completely eliminates worrying thoughts. But real faith, strong faith, active faith, stabilizes wavering thoughts it stabilizes wavering thoughts you know in james chapter 1 and verse 2 he, he begins speaking here and where he says consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials i mean when you look at that i mean just think about it. he didn't just say consider it joy or consider it not a big deal i mean he actually said consider it not just joy but pure joy and I'm going to tell you what, to consider a trial pure joy, how many of y'all need? No, you need a new mind for that. You need a new mastermind that's going to transform that thought. Because we, we just take that worry, those trials, and we just, they become consuming. He says, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of what? The faith. See how the faith is in this issue of what you f consider joy. Not the trial you're going through, not the circumstances, but how you're applying your faith is how you live with this, this different attitude and joy. Because the test in your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. How many of y'all will sign up for some of that? Amen. Oh, but it goes on and it says, But if you lack wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously. And when I really made that statement and I looked, I said, Well, that's really a faith too. All throughout this passage is faith. Because you won't ask God for something, really ask God, unless you believe there is a God. You've got to believe there is a God. He hears and he answers and he richly rewards those who seek him. That's really the God we serve, faith. And it says, who gives generously. Wait a minute, you've got to believe that. That you've got to believe that when you ask, he doesn't just kind of like sometimes a little. No, no, he's going to give you what you need. 
He says generously to all, not just somebody, without finding fault. And I just want to encourage you today. Sometimes we think, well, I'm not able to hear God. I'm not able to get answers to prayer. And somehow he seems far away. And I just really, because, you know, I know I'm messing up. I know I failed. I know I did something. And what I want you to know is you first, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ through faith in him and what he did on the cross and the power of his blood, and he rose from the dead, and you've confessed it with your mouth, you believe it in your heart, you are saved, you are in relationship with it. And if you are there, then he is going to give it to you generously. And you need to understand it. Now, that doesn't mean you're supposed to stay in fault and sin and all those other things. But you are supposed to believe that God is going to answer. And it says it will be given to him. But then he goes on. He could have ended it there. But the Spirit of God who was inspiring this word, which he does every word, it says, but when he asked, he must believe. And then he reinforced this. He could have left it there and says, not doubt. Believe. And not doubt, because God knows we believe. I'm going to believe this. I'm believing it. Oh, but maybe not. I'm going to believe that. Oh, but maybe not. I'm going to believe. Oh, wait a minute. I believe, but now it doesn't look right. Or now it didn't turn out right. See, that's when you're, you're doubting what you heard and received. Because he who doubts is like a wave. wave in other words, wavering. A wave of the sea. Up and down, left and right, in other words, has no control of their life. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded man and unstable in all he does. And what God wants you to know is that he's there to give you wisdom and that he will give it to you. And it will then be held on to faith. When you have faith, it, that when it does not doubt, it stabilizes your life. There's a stability in there because when the trials come, which is what we're talking about here, when the issues come, when the rejection comes, when the persecution comes, when the, you know, the stock market falls and when the elections don't go and when, when your, your friend denies you and whenever, whoa, wait a minute, the, the storms are raging, I'm going to be right in the middle of the storm and I am not going to waver that I did what God wanted me to do. There's so many times in our life you have to like lock that in and believe it. I remember I've shared this story before, but, but over 30-something years ago when I was working for the DuPont company, and I'd worked maybe a year or two, and I was, I was probably about 24, just saved, just in my earth, just maybe a year or two, and I was so in love with Jesus and His Word, and I was, I was just consuming His Word every day. And, one, and we were praying. I was working shift work. I had all these weird shifts. And I, we were praying and agree. And I, I want to be able to have where I can serve you, Lord. I want to be able to come to church on the weekend. And, uh, you know, because it was messing my schedule. I had to work all 12 to 8, 8 to 4, and 4 to 12, and all kinds of shifts. And we were praying that. And then one day my uh, a guy calls me up and he says, uh, this guy walked out of the office. Quit that day because, you know, he walked, the work was so hard and stressful putting together the budget of the plant and he says we need somebody so they picked me and I had no background in accounting I knew nothing about accounting I didn't know what the word debit meant now I know that's hard for y'all to understand because of debit cards I didn't know what that word what do you mean you can have a negative number with money well you know because that didn't you know a scientist that I am so because that's the only training I had is science and math and I went there, and they said, you're going to have to put together the whole budget of the whole plant, and if it's not done right, the whole plant will suffer, and we may lose money and investments because, you know, the main office in, in Delaware will, you know, because we'll miss our marks. And I had to pull this whole budget, and it was all done by hand with hand numbers and calculators. I couldn't even run a calculator. Have you ever seen anybody type like this? You know, and I had a friend that could run numbers like that. I finally can run numbers. I still can. But I was there, and I knew nothing. And the guy that was training me, he went across the other side of the plant, and he was up to his eyes. And it takes about 12 hours a day for about six to eight weeks to put this together. That's the man hours of lots and lots of people, and I was supposed to do that. And I would just sit there. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know where to begin. And I remember one night, late at night, I was in there, and the whole administration building is empty but me. 
And I'm sitting there with papers, papers everywhere, and numbers. And I said, I don't even know what to do. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to start. And I was just sitting there, and I said, God, I'm desperate. And I got up, and I started walking around in the hall and went down to the bathroom. And I was like, God, I don't know what to do. And I said, I need a word from you. And those days, I was carrying a little New Testament uh, Bible. You can carry it on your phone now, if you know that, you get an app. But I had a little New Testament Bible about the size of that wallet, and I carried it in my back pocket, and I'd read it every day in between breaks and lunch and everywhere else. And I said, I need a word from you, Lord. Now, I'm not saying this, you should ever do this. You shouldn't. But that day, it worked. Because <laughs> you might pull out a scripture that says, you, you know, Judas died, you know, or something. <laughs> <clears throat> But I was just, I don't know why the Lord impressed me, but I, I took that Bible. I said, Lord, I need a word from you because I am desperate. I don't know what I'm doing. And I opened my Bibles up to James chapter 1. And it said, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously. But when he asks, do not doubt because he will not receive anything. Amen. And I was like, that's my word. Okay, God, I'm asking for wisdom on how to do this. I need it, I'm receiving it, and I got it. You have spoken to me, this is a miracle. You've given me this word, this is my word now. It is alive. Sometimes the, the word jumps off the page to you for that day. That's why you need to be in the word every day when you need it. And all of a sudden, I went back to my office, but you see, faith takes action. It takes faith with God's word in this promise. You've got to believe it. And then you got to act. You can't just, like, not act. And I went back, and I'm telling you, my desk was covered with papers and stuff and piles of stuff. I didn't know a thing about it. That I walked out, and I said, so what am I going to do now, Lord? I'm going to act. And I just picked up the pencil, because back then there were no computers, no personal computers. Everything was hand and pencils. And I picked up a pencil, and I said, I'm going to begin to write now, Lord. Because you're going to give me wisdom. And literally, as I moved and put the pencil down, shoo, wisdom started flowing into me. And I put that whole budget together and became famous around DuPont, including Delaware, because of my financial abilities. Amen. <laughs> From that day, this has been my life scripture, one of them. And we pray it every day, almost, in this office, every meeting, every decision. I'm asking God. I'm, I'm saying we've got to do this. Every trustee meeting, every staff meeting, every meeting. with Give us wisdom, God. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. And he will do it. Amen. Amen. Now, you, you know, when you say this, you've you got you to gotta put it together. With I don't have time to teach you. You ask. You ask God. He gives it. You've got to make sure it's filtered through the will of God because everything needs to be in His will. You can't just receive some stupid idea, you know, because you've got to know what the Word of God says. So you filter it through the Word because you're not going to get your answer if it's against God's will. So you know God's will. You filter it through the Scripture. Then you go, and if, you're still in, if there's still an area and it's not 100% clear and, or you want a confirmation, then you go to wise counsel. It says, he who seeks wise counsel will be success and prosper. So you go through and you seek counsel through wise people and you process it. And you know, If it's a real, real serious decision, sometimes you don't have time to do all that. You've got to ask and you got to act now. So you need to learn how to do this. And when you receive it, you're not going to doubt. You're not going to waver because sometimes your decisions is going to not be understood by people. They're not going to, the decisions I make about this church, I know some of you think, why in the world did we do that or are doing that? Why is that changed? Why is it? Because we've sought God, we've asked, and we've received. And we're believing that God. And, but there comes a place because sometimes the results... It's not based on the results, as I've told you before. You pray, you seek God, you get that peace. Sometimes, you, well, I didn't hear exactly. Yeah, but you, you've been praying and praying, and you still have peace about it? Yeah. Well, guess what? That's your answer. And when you do, you make decisions, and then you not doubt. When it explodes in your face, and people get mad and upset, and things go wrong, circumstances change, you say, hallelujah. Thank you, God, because I'm not doubting that this was your decision. You see, that's where faith steps in. And guess what? When you get that, 
you got peace. You'll stop worrying and wavering because you know what? Well, I made the decision and now they don't like it. Well, I made the decision and that didn't turn out good. Well, I made the decision. Well, did you go through the steps? If you go through the steps, you got to just go with the flow then and stop worrying, stop wavering. Not, oh, they don't like it. Oh, they do like it. That's what politicians do. Amen. We're not politicians. We're relational with God and followers and disciples of His. Faith stabilizes wavering thoughts. So I want to ask you, what decision do you need to act on? What decision do you need to act on? Maybe there's some right now. I know some of you, this will be a life verse for you if you take this verse. Because you'll have decisions almost every day of your life for the rest of your life. But you got to find peace. you got to find... Because when, when you can't make a decision, all life becomes confusing. Well, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of this. I'm a, you know, what if it doesn't turn out right? What if they... You, no, you can't go through life like that. Because that's unstable. It's, it's just tearing you apart. It's causing you illness and a hurt and brokenness. So what decision do you need to make? And then act on. In other words, do something. Do the thing that God has asked you to do. Pray about that and apply that to your life in Jesus' name. Faith extinguishes a worrying thought. It stabilizes a wavering thought. But it strengthens a loving thought. Paul was preaching to the uh, Ephesians, the people of Ephesus. And he was trying through the Spirit of God to help them understand about knowing this love that passes knowledge. And he says, I pray out of your glorious riches in Ephesians 3.16 that he may strengthen you. In other words, there's strengthen with power, this supernatural thing of God through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? How? Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That's what he's praying for this church. I mean, it's nice little poetic words. I want you to hear them. There's praying. I'm praying that for you and for me, that this might happen. This is a powerful prayer. We should pray for other people and for ourselves, that Christ may dwell in my hearts by faith. And that I'm going to be strengthened with His power. That this dwelling... and We know through the Scriptures that when we receive Christ, He comes and by the power of His Spirit and lives in us. It's a personal, intimate relationship. And I just really, when I see this word dwelling, I just, I just want it to... I know He's in there. If you believe, He's in there. But I think what He wants to do is He wants to take full occupation of your house of your dwelling. He wants to fully dwell you. He wants to fully fill you. He wants to empower you. He wants to strengthen you. And sometimes we're, we're holding back because these thoughts of, of, uh, are battling our mind. And we're asking, well, why, God, did this happen? And what, you know, did that happen? And, and where are you, God? You seem so far away. And do you care? And, and I know that just breaks God's heart. And I, you know, might stop believing in you if you don't do this. Well, that's not even faith. You know, there's a place here when you have true, real, living, active faith. Something happens on the inside. But you've got to lift that shield. You've got to raise that faith. Because there's weak faith and strong faith. This is a powerful, indwelling faith that's rooted and established in love may have power. That this love is the key. The, the thing that's going to cause everything to grow. And the thing that's going to establish you and stabilize you. And power in your life. He says with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. Because he's trying to say it's actually so huge you cannot know this in your intellect. But then he says, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That there's a knowing of his love that's beyond intellect. 
And that's what so many people do. And so many people who say they're atheists or agnostics or they're, they're just barely believers. Well, I don't see him. I don't feel him. I don't know him. Where is he? You see, to our eyes, he says faith is the substance. It's real of things that are hoped for. The heavenly realm of eternity. Not the evidence of things seen. That's what faith is. It goes beyond your trial. It goes beyond your circumstances. It goes beyond your diagnosis. It goes beyond your acts of persecution. That there's a transformation on the inside of you that comes inside of you that's beyond the intellect that says, I know Jesus is Lord. I know that he's real. I know that I know I let's dig deep down in my knower. All of a sudden, you here I am a scientist, but when Jesus saved me, I just believed and he said, Here I am. And he came a reality that went beyond what I could know. I you can't study him, you can't figure him out. And sometimes it's holding us back, and maybe that's where you are. You're wanting to see the proof, and then you'll believe. That's not faith. But when you believe, God gives you the proof. Oh, he comes and lives inside of you. And it's more real than anything you've seen with the physical eyes. You see God clearly. That he loves you. That he's with you. That he walks beside you in the midst of your storm. That he's real. How many of y'all know Jesus is real? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, there's a power of God. That you know, that you know, you got to settle this thing. you got to hold on in faith. And when things rock you, I mean, in my early ministry, I was remembering a story of this, this young guy I'd mentored since he was a teen. And we prophesied over his firstborn baby, a son. And he came into this world and died just within a few hours of birth. Turk, totally perfectly healthy, but he breathed the feces in the water. And, and it was like people were telling him, the devil stole that baby. And that, that God robbed that, that wanted it. If you'd have had faith, you wouldn't have lost your son. I want to go kill somebody. I said, how could anybody say such a thing? I said, this what? Because if anybody had prayer, that baby had prayer. We'd laid hands on her t- stomach and just declared blessings and prophesied Barbara prophesied the name Daniel and this baby was perfect and beautiful and I got had to get on my face and say God I don't understand where am I and this is like we first starting in preaching and started our church in North Carolina I said this is like where is well, wait a minute faith and he came in me he says faith is trusting me in all circumstances and I said okay God I'm going to trust you it's going to be good when the father went to the, they had to transport it to another city and they, he car- held it in his arms in the helicopter and it passed away. And as he was holding the baby and he was holding it and he got, was, was holding on to it and he was crying. He says, how could this happen? And God says, I've got a plan for Daniel. He says, if you let him go, if you give him to me, you give him to me, he says, I'll use his life. But you have the choice to believe me and trust me and you can hold on to him and I'm going to be limited in what I can do. And so this young man, much younger than me by probably 10 years, he was barely old enough to be married and he said, God, I'll give him to you. Use him. And he did. From that moment at the funeral, the Lord told him, he says, every time the wind blows, you'll feel my presence. And he did. At the funeral, the wind began to blow. And both him and his wife were filled with such peace and joy. They were comforting everyone else. And from that, they began to have a ministry to people who have lost babies. And right from that, immediately, she got pregnant again. And there was a prophecy. And now they have a Samuel who's probably in his 20s. Or something, and so God restored them, amen. And Daniel's still being used to help people that are struggling with pain, he's still changing lives, amen. 
You see, faith goes way beyond what the circumstances is when you trust Him enough to go through whatever the trial is. And I know you haven't gone through anything worse than that probably, or at least it, it, no matter what. I'm not trying to belittle your thing. I'm telling you, that's about as bad as it gets. And I'm telling you that they came out of that thing victorious. And still to this day, praise God and rejoice and have a ministry to help others. Faith strengthens loving thoughts because your mind knows that God is true. He is good. He is loving. And when you're going through the trial, He's going to be there with you and use everything. It goes beyond intellect. So I'm going to ask you, what steps of faith do you need to take to strengthen your love for God? Because you see, God has changed you. He saved you. And if He hasn't, I'm going to give you a chance. But you can just sit there, and, but there's always a next step. That's one of our sayings around. There's always a next step. What's your next step? Well, maybe it's become a member. Maybe it's to start reading your Bible, praying on a regular basis. Maybe it's to uh, go to growth track. We will help you find your gift and, and where you fit in. Maybe it's to uh, start serving and using your gifts. Start doing things. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is love is going to blossom. When you take a step towards God, He takes a step towards you. And your life will begin to be filled with love for people and for God. And you're wondering, where is He? He's right here if you take another step toward Him. Amen? And so I'm challenging you. What step do you need to take? Growth track, prayer, serving, whatever it is. Water baptism. We have a next step area. This is so important to us. In fact, they have some cards back there with some steps on it. And go to the next steps room here or at, at Middletown. And there's a, a room right on the side in the foyer. It's called Next Steps. And there's people there that will help you kind of talk to you. And if you've got questions about next steps or small groups or anything else, maybe you need to be in a freedom group. Amen. Maybe you need to be in a small group next week when we start those. Whatever your step is, take a step. And let your faith grow because then your love's going to grow for God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for your word. It is so powerful. It is living. It is active. Today, I pray, God, it just cut away those strongholds that are hindering people from being victorious in every area of their life. Today, truth rises up and faith rises up as a shield and protects them from every fiery dart and that there's no longer wavering and love is going to blossom in their lives as they step each step closer to you they're just going to fall more and deeper in love with you and while we're still praying if you're here today or at Middletown or watching online and you say I really haven't made that step to believe in Christ but today I will I don't understand it and you never will till you believe but today, you're going to say, I will believe. Let me just pray this prayer. He promises to save you. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe in Jesus. I believe He is Lord. And I believe He died for my sins so I could be forgiven. And I believe He rose again so I could live for Him with power and have eternal life. I receive him, I confess him, and I'm going to follow him from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for every one of those decisions. Every miracle that's happening in every heart, every life. I believe miracles are happening all over this room and in Middletown. That just people are receiving this by faith. And this is going to be the greatest year you've ever had. Hey, if you do, if you made a decision to follow Christ, then uh, let me know. Uh, check one of the Connect cards that's in the back of the chair or in your worship guide at Middletown. And let me know. I want to send you some information right away. And if you're watching online, put that, click that connection button. We'll make sure you get that sent to you via email. So God bless you. God is amazing good. And he is totally in love with you. Amen. Hey, let's give God praise.